If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. in horror 911 the planes hit the towers and the towers came down did you ever wonder how they fell so fast well maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask Don't you think it's strange there were no fighter jets did someone give the order not to intercept and if they really scrambled then why'd they fly so slow maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know Where was our president, George W., that fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. Bushes and Bin Ladens. Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? Get your views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Howdy! Welcome to the 25th episode this season of 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah, that's pretty regular. Every two weeks, more or less, for the last four years. I hope I don't have to do this very much longer, but, uh, you know, we've got 
lots of things to talk about today. First of all, I'd like to say a few things about the Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Portland type of thing. Uh, that's a natural result of the efforts to bring down our economy, which 9-11 was part of that to justify, well, we've been through that before. But let's just put it this way, about Occupy Portland, Occupy Wall Street. What bothers me, I mean, I, I support it wholeheartedly. Um, it's the only thing we got going, and it's just baffling the opposition because they don't know what to think about an, a leaderless group. You know, it's more or less leaderless. But the problem with being leaderless is that it's also without a focus. Uh, it seems to me that there's a whole bunch of stuff that should be said. First of all, that they should be marching up and down demanding a stop of all of our aggression in uh, the Middle East, the withdrawal of all our forces. They stop the war. That should be the primary thing. And why, when we're talking about Wall Street, is it tax the rich? And people don't even have a conception of how rich rich is. They think a guy driving the Mercedes, living in the nice house in the West Hills, they think he's the rich guy. No, he's not the enemy. He doesn't even qualify to wash the feet of the rich. And people have to understand how rich rich is. That's why we played that uh, L curve by David Chandler on the last show, you know, where the income just shot off the screen like that at the half of 1%. Well, the other thing that they're not saying is how about, you know, cutting back on the trillion dollars a year that we spend on, you know, 1,100, I guess is the number now. The latest number I saw is 1,100 military bases all around the world. We do not need to maintain 1,100 military bases. Now, we need to do it if you understand their strategy. If you want to, you know, go along with the strategy, we have to do it because the idea is global dominance, and especially where the uh, natural resources like oil, uranium, lithium, you know, even gold and other things, uh, they're systematically killing everybody in the Middle East. They have been for 20 or 30 years now, systematically murdering wholesale slaughter of anybody in the Middle East that could possibly, you know, hamper our collection of the natural resources. And we're not going to stop until everybody that opposes us is dead. And that's a fact. Now, Wall Street should be focusing on that, saying, no, that's not tolerable. We don't tolerate that type of policy. We do not need to dominate the world like that. We do not need to dominate the world's resources. You know, and from the point of view of you and me, it's the same, no matter who has those resources. It doesn't matter whether the global elite have it or local people have, you know, suppose Shell Oil was owned completely here in Oregon. It doesn't matter to you and me. Do you suppose that we're going to get a price break because it's in Oregon? No. Whoever owns the oil is expecting us to make them rich. So the idea that we have to have the oil, that it somehow benefits us? No, it doesn't benefit us at all. It benefits the super rich corporations. After all, people are going to have to wake up. That's the hardest thing we have to deal with about 9-11 and Occupy Wall Street and everything else is that in order to understand that 9-11 was an inside job, that it was controlled demolition, and that there really is a global attack on our economy, in order to understand all that, you have to go through a shattering, a paradigm shattering experience. The closely held beliefs that America is a force for good and truth, that's a lie. It always has been a lie. We have not ever been a force for truth and justice. Now that's the truth. It's hard to, it's hard to take. The United States has, it, it is not now, and it has never been a force for truth and justice, ever. It's all, the military, our military has always been used without exception to guarantee the wealth of international global mass, maxi corporations. Uh, corporations use our military as, as their economic enforcement arm. You know, it's, it, and we talk about how capitalism is bad. Well, I happen to believe capitalism is bad. 
it's based on exponential functions and you know what don't you understand about exponential functions not working in a finite world um, so but without saying capitalism is bad what we have isn't capitalism you know the textbook capitalism it's crony capitalism it's it's uh, cheating capitalism it's criminal capitalism uh, use the adjective of your choice uh, when you cheat the system you're not using it when when they talk about the, why the prices are high and whatnot they talk about market forces and supply and demand and all that but they never talk about you know when the supply goes up they don't drop the prices I mean well I, I'm not that's a silly analysis but the point that I'm making is doggone it the economy it's the economy stupid you know anyway I, I I'm just so pissed off about everything uh, but now I'm being incoherent so let's let's just take a little break right here um, and get to a 9-11 subject I've got a video to play and I'll gather my thoughts back together I don't work from notes as you can tell and I'm not gifted with gab like Alex Jones but uh, what we have here remember the put options and and the suspicion that there was insider trading <laughs> I mean it's not it's more than a suspicion uh, it's it's a fact that so many companies got you know their fingers dipped into the you know the betting market what do you call it the futures and all that but based on what they knew was going to happen on 9-11 um, it's statistically proven well it turns out that there is a group of people that are concerned about what did happen with those finances and the people that pulled off the you know this economic coup d'etat of 9-11 were pretty sure that their records would be destroyed in the tower collapse there were hundreds of computers with hundreds of hard drives that uh, were supposedly destroyed but it turns out no they don't get destroyed they get encased in dust and concrete battered and broken but the disk itself can still be read by a laser process and so far this company has done 400 they've recovered 400 hard drives that were taken from the towers uh, and they're discovering some pretty horrendous things about you know who knew what about 9-11 but they're holding that close to the vest but this is no no frivolous enterprise they're charging between 25 and 50 thousand dollars per hard drive to recover the data on it so 400 drives you do the math that's 20 million dollars somebody's paying these folks to, to find information on these hard drives that have been recovered so I'm gonna go ahead and start this now it's it's not in English it has subtitles but I, I don't think that it's uh, gonna detract that much there are some people who do speak English on this and anyway here we go in de maanden na 11 september krijgt het Duitse bedrijf Convar de opdracht om te proberen harde schijven van computers uit de puinhopen van het WTC te redden. Wat blijkt? Vlak voor de aanslagen is vanuit het WTC zelf zo'n 100 miljoen dollar illegaal weggesluist. Convar stuurt een persbericht en verklaart dat de daders waarschijnlijk hoopten dat de aanslagen alle sporen zouden wissen. Een duidelijker bewijs van voorkennis is nauwelijks denkbaar. Hierna neemt de FBI het onderzoek over en sinds vorig jaar mag er niets meer over naar buiten komen. We bellen met Convar en spreken met een woordvoerder die op creatieve manier bevestigt dat de eerdere berichten over voorkennis wel degelijk juist zijn. Is het zo dat large amounts of money were transferred illegally out of the World Trade Center on the morning of 9-11, just before the attacks? If you would look on the website, I would say yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> because that was that was uh, the information from uh, from a previous release. Uh -huh. If you would ask me today, I would need to tell you that I, I could not give you any additional information about that. I said, I, I'm really sorry. About if, if I would have asked you one one year ago, what well, would I would say? What we what we had there is what we said before. Yes, exactly. Versiegelt kommen Sie direkt aus New York. Beschädigte Datenträger geborgen aus den Trümmern des World Trade Centers. Absender das amerikanische Verteidigungsministerium. Die sind immer so schmutzig.